hope you all have a wonderful day and today I got this guy in the mail and it's basically a new camera it's an Nikon D5100 and it's gonna be the camera that I'm gonna use from here on out to shoot a lot of my videos the reason being it was basically that sweet spot what I could find at least in between price and sort of uh, performance and quality that I can get out of this thing for the money that I was gonna pay for it so it happened to be one of like the most recommended cameras and people a lot of youtubers are still using it even up to today even though it came out quite a few years ago now the problem with this camera is that while it's very good it's a DSLR it can you know you can do a lot of things with it where you can't really do with a point and shoot and its firmware has a, a lot of limitations in it and that's what really holds you back from really doing a lot of the things that you would normally do with a professional grade camera for instance right and today I'm gonna be showing you basically how to ha hack the firmware a bit it's very simple it's very easy all you need is a computer and an SD card and your camera and I do want to mention before we actually proceed any further that if you have a warranty on this thing this will probably void your warranty because of the fact that we're gonna be modifying firmware and flashing it also do be careful when you do this there the risk of anything actually going wrong is very low but you need to be very careful when you do this I do recommend before even attempting to do anything else that your battery is at least full or at least you have one good full battery that you're going to use for this entire process that your uh, SD card is a good SD card that it's not failing that it's not corrupting data randomly and basically patience because this will take a little bit of time but you know don't rush it if it feels like it's taking a while it's gonna take a while so don't worry uh, don't turn the thing off in the middle of it flashing obviously because that will brick it so let's get right into this now the two things you're gonna need to do is actually navigate to the site for your camera's firmware and you're also gonna need to navigate to this site which is the patching tool uh, both of which I have a link to in the description also to run the patching tool you'll need uh, Microsoft Silverlight which is a plugin think of it like flash player for instance you're gonna need that as well which th this website will link you to in case you don't have it now the first thing you're going to do is actually just scroll down and make sure you get the firmware file so you just check accept and hit download which I already done here and as you can see uh, I have the file here now it's not going to really do anything when you run it it's just going to give you a folder so as you can see a folder just appeared here so this folder will have this bin file now this bin file is the firmware itself this is all the code that the camera will use uh, to store in memory now now we're going to navigate to the online patching tool we're going to select the firmware select it from here select this file and then as you can see you can basically get an idea of what you can enable and disable also if you don't know what you're going to get with your camera hit down in the bottom they'll have a list of all the different things you can add depending on your camera model and the firmware version you have so for instance D5100 1.02 I can add all of these features that you see here so let me scroll back up so the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna remove time based limitations or restrictions and this is basically gonna remove the 20 minute limit on the recording uh, but as you can see it still tell you uh, the 4 gig file limit is still in place uh, another thing I'm gonna wanna do is also enable the 54 megabit bitrate on 1080p video now what this will do is basically allow you to take much more clear video as if you're using a much more professional camera the more the bitrate you have the clearer the video will look uh, also it does make it a bit more uh, of a hassle to edit but if you know what you're doing it should be easy it'll take a little bit longer to render though is the only downside to this but it's worth it in the end so I'm gonna check that and another thing I'm gonna check is also make the compression for raw actually lossless so there is no compression it'll give you bigger file sizes but if I'm shooting in raw I kind of want it to be in that format so that way I can see the entire image without any sort of compression whatsoever uh, let's see what else I can do here and another thing in in for whatever reason in the future uh, I buy non-branded batteries I'm gonna also enable that so as you can see it's very simple you really don't have to hassle with anything here you just enable this and that's it and some of the patches don't actually have a description but the main ones like these will they'll tell you you know oh, what what does what and stuff like that but uh, yeah that's about it and the only thing I think I can also say is for these ones that are like red I believe these ones are broken in this firmware version and the ones that are green are fixed 
So let's hit save to patch file now. I'm basically gonna just name it the same file except we're gonna just name it underscore patched like so and just save that and it should be in that folder now so if you minimize it as you can see it's there basically same file size so no need to worry about that now the next thing we're gonna want to do is actually we're gonna move back to the camera now and uh, I'm kind of gonna pause the video here for a second and put this in post because I realized when I was doing this that when you make a higher or if you choose the higher bitrate option on the website it actually decreases the amount of time you have for recording so for instance if I put the 54 megabit option it would only allow me to record about 10 minutes so do be wary of that but in the end I ended up reverting that option just to get the extra time from the time restriction thing removed uh, it bumps it up from uh, 20 minutes to 25 minutes and what you see on screen is the image of the options I ended up using uh, after messing around with this for about a few minutes all right so now that we're back at the camera what we're gonna do is we're going to take out the SD card like so put it in the computer which is all the way over here and then now that we're on the computer all we're gonna do is take the patched bin file and throw it onto the root of the SD card like that now we're going to close out of this, close out of that, then we're going to take the SD card back out now, like that, and we'll go back to the camera. So we're going to plug the SD card back into the camera, let's roll it around, there we go, like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the camera like we normally would, like this, and let me actually get onto the, uh... Alright, so now hopefully you guys can actually see the screen, apologies for the shaky hands. But now what you want to do is you're going to hit your menu key and uh, wait for the menu to come up. You're going to navigate to the wrench icon and then scroll down until you see the option that says firmware version like that. And then next you're going to scroll down and hit update. And then it'll give you a prompt. You'll just hit yes. And after you hit yes, you'll notice uh, the update will take a little bit of time. So do set the camera down and let it update. I'm going to fast forward this bit here so you guys don't get bored and I'll be back when it's done. And pretty much after the update actually completes, you'll get this prompt and then from there you basically what you'll do is you'll turn your camera off and turn it back on and then basically it'll boot up into the new firmware. And uh, yeah, pretty much here I'm just gonna turn this thing on and just kinda start messing with it again. But that's pretty much it. It's that simple. And if for whatever reason you want to revert all your changes and go back to the stock firmware, well, that's also very simple too. All you just got to do is put the original bin file onto your SD card and flash that and it'll revert all the settings back to stock. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And I've been playing around with this for a little bit and I've actually enjoyed it, especially in manual mode when you get to change a lot of the settings. And as you guys can see, me showing you guys the 25 minute mark thing there on the camera. And yeah, it's uh, that simple, especially when it came to doing this entire thing. The guys who made that website, very helpful, very, you know, useful. And this doesn't only work on the D5100, this also works on many other different kinds of cameras, especially in the D series. You know, if you're just interested, give, give the website a look and, you know, all the cameras that they have supported will be listed there. And even if yours isn't listed there, there's always forms and stuff and, you know, you can always Google to see if you can get a modded firmware for your uh, specific camera. That's why I ended up picking this one up because of how universal it was and that everyone basically knew how to mod the firmware, unlike the L820, which is great, but it lacks a lot for a camera. That point and shoot that I used for quite some time. It, especially when it came to like focusing and stuff it didn't really have a manual focus it only it only had autofocus and even then when you were recording video it doesn't refocus uh, when you press the button so it's just it was a hassle to use and this honestly will hopefully make things a lot easier and plus I want to learn how to make a lot of nice sort of effects and things like that with an actual camera rather than doing it all in post so hopefully this will help with production quality and video quality and as a whole also one last thing before I end this video, I do show a thing here, uh, basically I bought a bracket for this camera and light I've had for a while. I used to use the light and microphone on my old camera, but as you can see, uh, there it is. Uh, the bracket, it's supposed to be for a flash bracket, um, well a flash like an old school camera flash, but I ended up using it with this anyway, it works just fine, it was the cheapest bracket I could find, and yeah, that's pretty much it.
And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And until then, I'll catch you all next one. Don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon, which will be linked in the description and in the outro. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more. And I'll catch you all next one. Till then, have fun. All right, kick back, relax, and grab yourself a beverage. A hop if you want to just pass to my liver. It's the evidence, as they say, is in the pudding. So show me the money like my name is Cuba Gooding. It ain't fool's gold, it's gold, fool. Can't stop, won't stop, keeping it old school. So cool. Big spoon is my nom's a plume. I keep it popping like a needle in a new balloon. And if you don't know by now, then you need more schooling. Let loose, kid. Get stupid. Got more flavor than I know what to do. It's to get your hands up if you're part of the movement. And bump to the bump to the baseline. I made it rock before your phone had FaceTime. Yes, sirree. You know my steez. I stay fresh to death like I'm drowning.